TFL EV is brought to you by Flow Charger, maker of reliable, high-quality charging stations for your electric vehicle. Hey everybody, I've got a really fun one for you today because this is the brand new BMW i4. And I think that this is the best BMW on sale today. Oh, and it also happens to be an all-electric sports coupe sedan with over 500 horsepower. Well, I think we need to see what 536 horsepower is like in a straight line with a hard acceleration. Now we have a number of different drive modes, Sport, Comfort, Eco Pro, and then you can also customize those a little bit as well. So what we're gonna do is stick it into Sport mode, and then I'm gonna go ahead and disengage traction control. And we're just gonna go into the first level of traction control um, limited assistance, just by going like that. And we're gonna engage launch control. Now launch control in this vehicle, is quite simple. So what we're gonna do is come to a complete stop and then put my foot on the brake, hard on the gas, and then let go. So, hard on the brake, full throttle, launch control active, and I'm gonna accelerate now. <laughs> All right, that is seriously impressive. Uh, when I ran this vehicle through some performance tests, I got 3.7 seconds using launch control, and then right around 4.1 without launch control. So really is an impressive amount of acceleration. I think I just gave our videographer a bit of a head injury there because he wasn't quite ready for it. But what you really gotta do to maximize acceleration is be in sport mode and have launch control activated. Now, if you don't have launch control activated and you're cruising along at say like 35, 40, you can still plant it and it really does take off quite well, but you don't get that same initial um, explosion that you get like when you're using launch control from a stop, and this also does have a little boost function as well. Now, when you go into comfort mode, the car changes quite a lot, so I'm gonna do the same acceleration here from about 35 as we did in sport mode. Now, it's good, but it doesn't give you that bang in the back of your uh, your neck. It, this, this will still outpace pretty much anything in comfort mode. BMW recently launched two brand new fully electric vehicles. This model, the i4, and then the iX, which is a large, expensive luxury SUV. And I was lucky enough to be at the launch of both of these vehicles. And what's interesting is that if you read between the lines, we've got two very different philosophies going on. The iX is supposed to be the spaceship, the Jetsons car. It's uh, redefining what a car is from an interior design standpoint, an exterior design standpoint. They really want you to know that this is a fully electric vehicle, whereas the i4, this model kind of flies under the radar. It looks like a conventional gasoline vehicle. In a lot of ways, it operates like a conventional gasoline vehicle, and yet you get a lot of the benefits of a fully electric powertrain. And that's why I think that this is one of the best BMWs. No, I'm gonna say the best BMW for sale today. Let's talk about the powertrain. See, what this car represents to me is 94 years of BMW experience in making vehicles. The platform, the suspension, the ride and handling is top notch. It's through and through BMW. It just happens to be an electric vehicle. So underneath this giant plastic cover, you'll find an electric motor in the front and one in the rear for a total system output of 536 horsepower and 586 pound-feet of torque. Uh, BMW says zero to 60 times in under four seconds. That might be a little bit pessimistic. I'm thinking probably more like mid threes in a lot of instances when you lose use launch control. Now I do want to try to demonstrate something coming out of this corner. Sport mode engaged. We're going to take this at about 15 miles an hour and then I'm just going to plant it right about now. All right. So there's a little bit of a sensation that the front end is trying to claw itself away from the rest of the car. Uh, there's a lot of torque being delivered to the front, which sometimes give it like a little bit of a wiggle under really hard acceleration. I feel like it almost feels like, like I said, the front half is trying to leave the back half. The front motor is rated at 200 kilowatts. The rear is rated at 250 kilowatts for a total of that 536 horsepower, 586 pound-feet of torque. But I love maybe like a little bit less from the front and a little bit more from the rear. Now from a suspension and driving dynamics, this has one of the best rides from a sporty EV ever. This blows a Model 3 right out of the water. It's just so good. You can really feel all that BMW history through the driveline. The suspension is so well calibrated. Big bumps, little bumps. You don't get any float, but it doesn't crash over anything as well. This rides way better than the newer full-blown M cars in my opinion. I'd take this ride over like a new M3 or M3 Comp 
any day of the week because those cars just beat you up so much now. But this M50 is nice and compliant, but still gives you plenty of bandwidth for uh, you know fast cornering. And speaking of that M50, there are two models. So there's the E-Drive 40, which starts about $55,000. And then there is the M50, which starts in the mid $60,000 range. This is, of course, the M50, it's all-wheel drive. The 40 is just rear-wheel drive with 340 horsepower. So this is the sporty model. This one has equipped about $77,000. It does apply for the full $7,500 tax credit, though. So uh, if you're looking at 55 starting, right, subtract 75 if you apply, and that, that is a pretty attractive starting price, but options really do <laughs> balloon the price quickly. The other reason I think the i4 is peak BMW right now, this is the best-looking uh, model in the lineup. It's probably no secret to you that they are making some questionable decisions when it comes to design language between the huge grills and now some of these stacked headlights. I'm not so sure they work very well, but the i4 is traditionally handsome. It's got a very long hood, a very low roof line, and then this sloping rear end. It just looks fantastic. Now it does look quite similar to, as we mentioned, the 4 Series Grand Coupe, but that is definitely a good thing because it's just such a good piece of design. And the other good thing too, even though it looks very sporty, it has an enormous trunk, something like 470 liters, uh, which is just 10 down from the gasoline model. And of course, the seats do fold down. And while we're back here, I want to show you this. This is very, very clever. BMW has incorporated with their charge plug, not only um, level one connectors, but also a 240 volt level two unit as well. So you can pop that in there and then charge much quicker using a home a NEMA like 1450 connector. So lots of clever thought there as well, but overall a fantastic piece of design and utility. Now this BMW has a really funky parking feature called a backup assistant. And say you've got like a really tight parking garage or a nasty parking spot, which is just a pain in the butt to get in and out of. Well, you click a little button here on the screen and then you park your car like you normally would. But then when you go to back up, when you shift the car in reverse, check out the steering wheel, it will automatically <laughs> retrace the route you took in on the way back out. The idea being that, well, you didn't crash coming into the parking spot, so you probably won't crash on the way back out if we put you in the exact same position. So that is a very funky system. Of course, hands-free. You can see I am touching nothing on the steering wheel. One of the cooler features in the new BMW i4. The i4 is very traditional BMW when you step on the inside, especially when compared to the iX. A lot of this is gonna be very familiar to current BMW owners with a couple of really nice exceptions. So let's start with the familiar stuff. You've got a start stop button. You've got a fairly normal BMW shifter. You've got this three spoke steering wheel design, which is very classic BMW, um, very nice to hold on to, right? A lot of the switch gear feels similar to gasoline models. So a lot of it is familiar to folks that have driven a three series, four series, five series for the last decade or so. But then you've got a bunch of really good improvements like this curved glass display for the infotainment as well as the cluster. It just looks fantastic and it's running the new iDrive 8 system, which is remarkably good. I have never really been a big fan of iDrive in the past, but this newest system is so intuitive. It's so much better in terms of navigating through menus, figuring out where different settings are. I even like this climate menu, which is always active at the bottom there. It's easy to understand and very, very intuitive. Same thing for the uh, instrumentation. It's easy to understand. You've got your speed on the left. You've got some, uh, you know, throttle indication, or I should say accelerator indication on the right here. You've got battery percentage on the left. You've got a range indicator on the right, uh, some information in the middle. Lots of really great stuff in the highest quality screens in the industry. So it's a good mix of old school BMW with the new stuff. Now the iX is a very cool interior to the SUV, but it's just off the wall in every aspect. This is still gonna be familiar to a lot of people. One area where the BMW does struggle a little bit is rear seat comfort. Now legroom is surprisingly good. My driving position about six feet tall. I got lots of legroom, but that nice sloping head, uh, head, head roof line. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> sloping roof line does interfere on headroom quite a lot. Uh, if we look in the middle here, we've got this little cup holder system. And then we also have uh, some climate control and some USB ports back here for rear seat passengers. 
Uh, comfort's good, it's just the headroom for taller passengers, which is gonna be an issue. Let's talk about range and charging, two very important things for an EV. So, the most range you can get out of an i4 is in the rear wheel drive 40. That's gonna be at 301 miles of range with the small wheels. Now, an M50, the all wheel drive dual motor, you can get up to 270 miles of range, but this one with the 20 inch wheels and those enormous 285 performance tires in the rear, this was rated at like 227. So a huge range hit for getting these very good looking wheels, admittedly. Um, that is probably the biggest drawback of this vehicle when you're paying this much money, especially compared to some of the Tesla competition, 227. Stuff's not really on par, uh, especially if you look at a uh, mile per dollar. However, in the last week of driving this around, I have put, you know, over 400 miles on this and I have felt that the range is very adequate because it does have a very impressive onboard uh, AC charger over 11 kilowatts, which is really, really, really good. Um, and then DC fast charging is impressive as well. A peak of 200 kilowatts and they say 10 to 80% in about 31 minutes, which is very good. This is an 83.9 kilowatt hour battery or 83.1. It's somewhere in that territory, just under 84. And usable is like 81.5. So they're, you're buying the battery and they're pretty much giving you the whole battery. They're not holding out on any when it comes to the max range capability, which I think is a really good thing. The BMW i4 M50 is not only one of the best BMWs I've ever driven, period, but one of the best EVs I've ever driven as well because you get that baked in BMW goodness, that excellent chassis dynamic that they are so well known for. The, the steering feel, the steering response, the quality, the fit and finish on the inside, but then you get the fun of instantaneous electric torque. The biggest issue, quite honestly, is the price on this one, $77,000 for the amount of range you get, which is, uh, you know, kind of low to hundreds territory it's just hard to compare to like a model 3 performance which is well into the 300s but overall if you want a vehicle to cruise around in go for canyon blast even go for an autocross or two this is a great choice it's just so much fun now let me know what you think in the comment section below as always this has been tommy behind the coal behind the camera is coal and we'll see you on the next tfl ev video